over the 30-yard line. The initial hit was made on him for Westchester by Jim O'Donnell. And Delaware benefiting by the new kick by the Rams. They bring the ball to the 30-yard line. That's about a 10-yard advance over the previous kickoff. It'll be first and 10 for Delaware. John Spar is the quarterback. Kason sets up as a wing back on the left. Now he's back in motion. Reader. And Reader's got about four before he is promptly upended. Making the hit on him was John Menino. Menino is a sophomore linebacker. Six foot, 205 pounder. Pickup of close to four on the play. Dan Reeder out of Christiana High School, Boston College transfer, second down and six. Delaware coming up in a preliminary set. Now they switch. And here is motion. Obvious motion by Tim Sager. And if anything, Howard, for 1983, we're off to an abortive start. I think Tim's probably just a little bit anxious. That might have uh, given away perhaps it was a pass play of his number. <laughs> That will sometimes happen, just a little bit too anxious to get downfield and find himself a spot in the clear. It will be a five-yard step-off against Delaware, pushing the ball back to the 28-yard line. And it'll bring up a second down and 11 situation. Reader had picked up four on first down. Delaware shifting. Going into the same formation as before, Slagle sets up tight on the right side. Here's Farr fumbling the football and falling on it is Doug Martin. Martin very alertly falling on the football as Farr pulled out just a little bit too quick. Never got the handle on the football and under these weather conditions that could be a problem this afternoon or this weekend as we uh, replay the University of Delaware games. Uh, some will see it early in the week and we'll see it later in the week. So we'll refer to our games as the weekend games, Howard. Yeah, I had the uh, glasses on Spar that time, and it looked to me like he looked up before he had the ball. He loses two on the fumble, third down and 13. He's going to throw the football. He's got a receiver making the reception and coming up close to the 35-yard line before he is upended at the 34. The catch is made for Delaware by Steve Pontiacus. Pontiacus with good size. Not enough for a first down. Mike Anderson is going to do the punting. He's standing back on his own 20-yard line. High in the air, but not much distance. It's going to hit at the 42, and it's going to hit a blue hen. So Westchester will take over on offense with good field position at their own 41-yard line. That's where the ball will be marked. And now they are going to move it up to the 43-and-a-half-yard line where Delaware will go on defense for the first time this season. We'll identify the Blue Hens defensively in just a moment. Mike Parrocks is the opening quarterback for the Westchester Rams. Behind him, Rich Ulrich and Mike Irving. The flanker is Drew O'Brien. Here is Irving. Irving with a nice hole out over the 45 to the 48-yard line. And he has a quick pickup of five on the play. We're going to see shuttling spread receivers, evidently, as Eric Bossert out of Dover High School in Dover, Delaware, checks in, and Ray Engel, who opened up on the first play as the spread receiver is now on the sideline. It'll be second down. We'll call it five. All right. He's going to keep the football after faking it. The Ulrich dives ahead for about three. A little bit better than three as he crosses into Delaware territory. And they'll mark the football down at the 47 and a half yard line. Good end zone shot of Westchester breaking out of the huddle. It'll be third and it'll be a long one at the Delaware 47 and a half yard line. Back split behind Horrocks, the quarterback. 
Horak rolling under pressure. Down he goes on a fine defensive stop for the Delaware Blue Hands, breaking through to make that stop. And it was a fancy stop. Jim Pulaski, he's the strong side safety, and he breaks through to knock down Horak back at the 45 yard line of Westchester. Seven and a half yard loss, and Westchester is going to have to punt it away. In to do that punting is reserve quarterback Ron Becker. Ron James is deep for Delaware, standing back at the 10. Becker just gets it off. James is going to let it hit. Now he's trying to track it down, and he's going to fall on it. Ron James playing a dangerous waiting game, Howard. I think he should have let it go into the end zone unless the ball touched him and we couldn't see it. But from where we're sitting, it looked like the ball had not been touched and then it got inside the five and he decided to fall on it. So apparently he must have felt that he touched the ball because the ball obviously would have made the end zone and he let it roll. The blue ends talking it over. Rather precarious position between their own one and two yard line. First quarter action, opening ball game, Delaware and Westchester. The hens pinned deep. Here is Reeder. Reeder's going to get him out of trouble. He's got some running room out close to the 10-yard line before a whole host of white shirts bring him down. John Menino helping head up the defensive charge. Sager is out. And Steve Pontiacus is in. That's a tight end for Delaware. Second down and two from their 10. Reader again. And he dives forward, and he looks like he's got enough for a first down. Falling on top of him as he went down, Doug Jacobs. He's the left defensive tackle. 245 pounders, six foot three. Delaware achieving a first down. Mike Lane now is the spread receiver to the far side. Here is far from me, the football. Westchester's got it. And it's that big Doug Jacobs. Doug Jacobs falling on the football. Westchester in business at the Delaware 12-yard line. Barr had trouble with a snap on Delaware's first possession, and here he coughs up the football. The Golden Rams with a golden opportunity here at Delaware's 12-yard line. Ulrich and Irving put back behind Horrocks, the quarterback. Here's a pitch to Ulrich. Yorich hemmed in nicely. He fumbles the football. Delaware dives for it, and the Blue Hens have got it. Pawlowski comes up with the football. He's been jotting on the spot twice early. Jim Pawlowski, the strong safety, he falls on Yorich's fumble, and Delaware gets it right back at their own 13-yard line. A quick change. An exchange of fumbles. The hands have it at their own 13-yard line. Chris Hire sets up as the slot right. Kaysan. Kaysan driven to the far sideline, and a flag goes down. As Kaysan goes down, one of those driving him out of bounds was Sean Niles. And he had home help from Rich DeRico, the flag thrown. Kaysan was short of the first down as he went out at the 21-yard line, but now let's check the flag. And it's going to be a major step off. Against Westchester. The referee, Robert Branch, personal foul against Westchester, moving the football out to the 36-yard line, where Delaware will have it first 
and 10. First quarter action, Delaware, Westchester, nothing, nothing. Westchester giving up a golden opportunity after recovering a Delaware fumble at the end 13-yard line. Reader, he just powers ahead. Out to the 40-yard line. Menino is one of those to make a primary hit along with Mike Murphy. Here's the defensive front for Westchester. As we take a look at the Delaware huddle as well. We'll go over the Westchester defense in just a moment. Fred receiver Paul Hammond to the near sideline. Second down and six. Here's Kaysan. Huge hole. First down. John Kaysan. Utilizing his speed. The first stop made on him by Bob Grundy. Grundy is the quarterback on the right side, and he made the hit on him. The ball resting at midfield. First and 10 for Delaware. Kaysan in motion. Reader. Reader did a nice bit of fancy stepping at the line of scrimmage, Howard. He saw no hole there initially and just slid to his left, and there was a gaping hole, and he's got himself about eight. Was filled in, that hole was filled up in a hurry, though, by Bob Grundy. Uh, Bob's been pretty busy so far on defense today. He's doing a good job. Grundy with a couple of stops for Westchester. Mike Lane, spread receiver. To the near side, double wing formation. First time we've seen this by Delaware. Here's Hire in motion. Here is Barr. He's going to pitch to Hire. He's a block. Cannot get the clearing block from Reeder that he needed, but he's got enough for a first down as he penetrates inside the Westchester 40. First down, Delaware at the 36 and a half yard line. Delaware now on a sustained march after recovering a Westchester fumble on their own 13-yard line. One play after Delaware had given the football up. Reader needs a block. Gets away from one man. Cannot get away from the horde, though. He shook the would-be tackle of Rich DeRico, who came up quickly, but Reader utilizing some strength. He's got that good size, 200-pounder, six-footer. Picks up three on the play. It'll be second down and seven at the 33 and a half yard line of Westchester. Kaysan has the wing to the left. Back in motion. Here is Johnny Merklinger into the football game for the first time. We were not expecting to see him play this afternoon. He has been bothered by preseason injuries and he is bothered there by two or three white shirts the primary white shirt belonged to Bob Lechner, a senior, six foot five, 235 pounder. Loss of a yard of the play, pushing the football back to the 34 and a half yard line. It'll be third down, we'll call it eight. Barr has thrown the football once it was complete. Barr rolling. He is diving for a first down. Far scurrying the far sideline. A lot of white shirts there to finally induce him to go down, but not before he had achieved. Well, now they're going to mark it back at the 28-yard line. It looked like he had gone forward, but they say the knee hit at the 28. And it'll be fourth down. Delaware will need two at the 28-yard line. Merklinger is out of the lineup. Chris Heyer is back in. That's at the right halfback spot. Kaysan setting up as a wing back here on the left. Everything else is in tight. Far. He is going to dive. The initial hit was made on him right at the line of scrimmage. Making the hit on him was Paul Nanny. A right side linebacker. He hit him right at the line of scrimmage, but uh, Spar, with some size, six foot three, 197 pounder. They're going to bring out the chains for a measurement, however. But 
Farr using his size a little bit to his advantage on that particular play. Yes, indeed. He was he was stopped at the line of scrimmage and just, like you say, used his size and his strength and uh, pushed forward that extra yard. And it off. Well, at least it played off for a half yard because that's how they achieved the first down by about half the length of the football. Not quite half a yard. It's first and ten for Delaware at the 26-yard line of Westchester. Opening day, and it's a warm one at Delaware Stadium. Don Merklinger back in the backfield. Double wing formation. Quezon now in motion. Far. He's got Mark Rossi in front of him. Far. Out of bounds. Near the 15-yard line. He had big Mark Rossi acting as a convoy for him. And at that size, he is a convoy, Howard. 6'2", 268-pound pulling guard. That's one of Tubby Raymond's favorite plays. He calls it the waggle. It's uh, the quarterback option where a uh, star can uh, either throw the ball or if he sees daylight or a big blocker in front of him can run with the ball, which he did that time. Paul Manny was the, uh, the defender that had a shot at him that missed him there. Check again the offensive unit for Delaware. Steve Patiakis, he replaces Tim Sager at tight end. Patiakis setting up on the right side. Merklinger in motion. Reader. He's got a couple as he pounds inside the 10-yard line, an advance of a little bit more than two. Mike Murphy, along with Paul Nanny, making the stop for Westchester. Pick up of a little better than two. Wall at second and a long seven. The football resting its own length. Far quick count. Kason gets a clearing block and stumbles over his own blocker. I think Martin did a good job pulling for him. Doug Martin pulling out from his left guard spot, but he appeared to stumble over Martin's feet. And down he goes. Looked like he had a big hole there, Howard, but he the, pulled the uh, stumbling act. The right linebacker, Paul Nanny, just stuck his hand out there and got a hold of his foot. That, that helped. You're right, Nanny was uh, 56 to 20. Auburn knocked off Southern Miss. Martin was trying to block out. It'll be third and three from the seven-yard line. Here is Reeder and whistles blow. Flag is thrown. Can Notre Dame big over Purdue, 52? Robert Brandt, our referee, says illegal procedure against Delaware, illegal motion, and that's going to cost Delaware Brandt marching off five yards back out to the 12-yard line. And it'll bring up a third down and nine. Third and nine facing Delaware. They've driven after recovering a Westchester fumble at their own 13-yard line. Double wing formation. Higher in motion. Reader on the draw. Reader inside the 10, close to the seven-yard line, so he gets back to five that they were marched off and a little bit better. Dan Reader. Troy Surfass makes the hit on him. Danny Reeder, hands on hips, a little bit winded. It is warm. It is humid. And it is now fourth down. The first down marker between the two and three yard line. The football between the six and seven. Case on, and he is met at the line of scrimmage, and Westchester has stopped the hens short of a first down. So Westchester on fourth down aborts Delaware's try for a first down as Kason was met standing up. They are going to bring out the six, but he's short. He's obviously short. Robert Brandt decided to bring out the chains, Howard, but... Uh, I haven't the faintest idea why. That was obvious that Kason was stacked up 
way short of the first down stick, and Westchester takes over. Could be a, a key pivotal point for the defense. They've shown that they can stop Delaware after Delaware has sustained a drive. Irving and Ulrich put behind the quarterback, Harrock, Mike Harrock. Now we've got a change for Ulrich, and getting his first crack with the football is Ray Holmes. Holmes and Ulrich will flip-flop once in a while. Holmes, a junior, not very big, 5'9", 165-pounder. Coachville, Pennsylvania is his home. Manages to pick up three on the play. It'll be second down and seven. Irving. Irving stumbling, and he falls forward to about the four-yard line. He took his little dip, and after coming out of the dip, Howard, uh, he had lost his balance, and he pitches forward between the three- and four-yard line. Halfway down, and made it easy for Kenny Pulaski to just finish him off, so to speak. We have the Pulaski twins in the secondary for Delaware, identical twins, Jim Pulaski and Ken Pulaski. Although they're identical, Jim Pulaski is 5'11", and his brother is 6 foot. Third down and 10. Irving losing two on the slip. Holmes on the draw. Nothing there. Now, he didn't make the stop, but I'll tell you who made the play for Delaware. Making the play for Delaware on that stop was John Gannon. Gannon forced his way into the backfield, Howard, and just managed to bump into Holmes, and down he went. Again, the, the Westchester runners appear to be having problems with the footing, and I can't understand why. Uh, uh, he, he slipped and lost his footing there again. He was halfway down before he was hit. Becker gets it out of there. James is going to let it hit, and it's going to take a Westchester roll. James tracking it down. He touches the football, dives on it, and they dive on James. And that's the second time, Howard, here in the first quarter of play that Ron James has let the football bounce when he probably should have tried to catch it in the air. That was a, that was a funny punt to feel, though. It was uh, not very high. It was, didn't have much of a spiral. It was like a line drive kick, and it was uh, hard to tell what it was going to do. And once it came down, it, it took some pretty funny bounces, and uh, James had all he could do just to surround it and fall on it. And another thing in his... Uh, not an excuse, but he was looking into a real harsh, glaring sun here at Delaware Stadium. It is sun-baked on the first Saturday of football for the Blue Hens. Kaysan. He is stood up. Good defensive pressure. First one breaking through there was Paul Nanny. Nanny slowed him up, and then there are two or three others that helped make the stop, including Craig Carbo, the middle guard. Not with great size, but evidently with good mobility. 5'10", 217-pound junior. Delaware across the front offensively. Tim Sager listed as the starter, but he's been flip-flopping with C. Pontiacus. That's a tight end. Sager is in there right now. John Farr, junior quarterback, first start. Farr. 45, check at 35 and 40, and he's run out of bounds. Far showing some elusiveness, and that was one of the reasons that Tubby Raymond favored him over B.J. Webster. In fact, they had a four-way battle for the starting quarterback spot in preseason. Now, granted, there were two likely candidate B.J. Webster and John Spar, who saw flip-flopping uh, service behind the graduated Rick Scully last season. But Spar won out, and it may have been his elusive running ability that got him the starting job. He picks up five, second down, and five. Here's higher in motion. Spar. They're trying to strip the football away from him. Almost do. And he goes forward for about two. On that third down play, and Delaware will be forced to punt. Delaware, 
Mike Anderson will do the punting. Ulrich and Irving, deep for Westchester. Ulrich, check it. Irving, he is smacked far just as he takes the football in at the 30-yard line. Putting the wood on him. Really laying it to him. Mike Byerly, we have reached the first quarter end here on opening day at the University of Delaware Stadium in Newark. Delaware's Blue Hens, nothing. The Westchester Golden Rams, nothing. We'll be back. Or even where you drive, you'll find the best in products, prices, and services right here at Delaware Tire Center. We're located directly across from the University of Delaware Stadium on South College Avenue in Newark. And here's just some of the ways we save you money. You see, we don't charge you for the services you need when you buy new tires. Mounting, new valve stems, rotation services, and even computer spin balancing are absolutely free with your tire purchase. So check the bottom line. First quality tires, low prices, free services. Your best buys are at Delaware Tire Center in Newark. We are set to begin second quarter of action. Nothing, nothing, Delaware and Westchester. Westchester with the football, first and ten on their own, 30-yard line. Horrox, he's going to throw the football, and it's going to be tipped and almost intercepted. Almost intercepted by Mike Harris after the football had been tipped by Jim Polowski. Pass intended for Reggie Hines, the tight end by Horrocks, but Delaware almost got the turnover. Evidently, uh, the Blue Hens are going to have to work on the tip drill just a little bit more, Howard. Interestingly, Len, that was the first pass of the ball game for either team. Well, we had Delaware throw a pass in the first quarter, but that was the first attempt by Westchester. Parox, he's going to give it to the sweet footed Irving. 40, 30, 20, they're not going to catch him. Westchester's on top, 6 to nothing. Just like that, boom. Mike Irving goes 70 yards. And the Westchester band and the cheerleaders from Westchester Mike Irving 70 yards, got a great opening block, and boom, he was gone. He was 20 yards into the secondary before anybody knew what happened. Coming on to try the placement is Tyrone Jones. Jones hits it. Looks good. It is good. Tyrone Jones is tacked on the seventh point, and Westchester as Tyrone Jones, who just kicked the football through for the seventh point, congratulates everybody as they come off the football field here at Delaware Stadium. Westchester has broken on top at 7 to nothing. It's a timeout on the field with a score. Westchester, 7, Delaware, nothing. Prepared with skill. The car. The pizza. No compromise. Delivery to your door in 30 minutes or less. The car. The pizza. The winners. From Domino's Pizza. Domino's Pizza delivers. Domino's Pizza. values are still important. Values like hard work, dedication, and attention to detail. A belief that results are important. That people deserve service and reliability. B. Gary Scott Realtors believe in doing things right. Try it. B. Gary Scott, your key to a better tomorrow. Westchester set to kick off. Tyrone Jones kicks it off, and it's going to be tracked down by James at the 6, 10, 
15, 20, and down at the 24-yard line. And the Rams come off the football field. Mike Hudson, reserve offensive lineman, makes the hit at the 24-yard line. Delaware, after recovering a Westchester fumble, drove just about the length of the football field before being stopped on fourth down. Westchester kicked it back to Delaware. The Hens couldn't move it. And Westchester goes on top. Second play of the second quarter. Seven to nothing. Reeder. Reeder's got a hole. 30, 34 yard line. Danny Reeder getting the great blocks up front from Mark Rossi, the right guard, Pat McKee, the center, and Doug Martin, the left guard. Close to a first down. And I believe we're going to have the change brought in. We are. But I'll tell you, that 70-yard run by Irving Howard sure silenced the crowd here at Delaware Stadium. There were an awful lot of quiet people. <laughs> Most of the noisy ones are sitting right under us as we're on the visitor side. But uh, I looked across on the other side, and there, it was motionless. It was like a still photograph. Delaware winning 15 straight in consecutive years over Westchester, but they find themselves in arrears right here in the second quarter with 14 and a half minutes to play, seven to nothing on the 70 yard run by Mike Irving. Kayton in motion, Reader again. Reader the 40, and he's out to the 44 yard line. They are just blowing Westchester off the line. They being Doug Martin, Pat McKee, and Mark Rossi. Rossi with that great size, six foot two, 268 pounder. Transfer from Penn State, who redshirted last year. Nine is the pickup. It'll be second down and one at the Delaware 43 and a half yard line. Double wing formation is higher. Sets up right. Here's Kason. Far. Looking. Throwing. Caught. Higher. Flag down. Flag is down as higher goes down at the Westchester 37 yard line. Now let's check out the flag. The discussion and let's see who did what it is going to go against Delaware offensive pass interference now Westchester when we first got the call we got a mix up from the official, and we had a couple of Westchester Rams waving toward Delaware, which indicated that Delaware was going to be hit, but it's Westchester that's hit with the penalty. And it is first and 10 at the 37-yard line of Westchester. Hammond puts into the near sideline. Here's Kaysan coming in motion. Far, higher, 30, 25, dives forward. To the 23-yard line, getting an ankle on him was Bob Grundy, busy in the first quarter, and picks up a little bit more business here in the second quarter. But Farr hits higher out of the backfield. First down for Delaware at the 23-yard line. Well, maybe Irving's 70-yard run woke up the Delaware offense, Howard. It looks like it did. Uh, Tubby's doing a little more passing now. That's two plays in a row where he's put the ball in the air. Although, in the first quarter, he did try a couple of times, but it just wasn't open, and uh, uh, Spar was forced to run with the ball. First and 10 at the 23. Here's Kaysan. He sheds one tackler. He's out of bounds. They're going to mark him at the 16-yard line. John Kaysan, the elusive senior at 5'10", 180 pounds. He's always been bothered by little nagging injuries, but he has in his mind the fact that he made it through preseason without an injury that he's going to have a good year. Hire is going to check out. Checking in with the offensive unit for Delaware is John Merklinger. He did not start the football game because of injury, but he did see service in the first quarter, and he's now in at right halfback. The pickup of seven of the play. Here is Merklinger. 
He is fancy footing his way for a first down as he dives to the 10 yard line. I'll tell you, give a little credit to the Westchester defender, that Captain Joe Maida. He stuck with Merklinger pretty well, though Merklinger was trying to juke him out, Howard. He's an elusive man. He's very quick because of his uh, short stature, and it's hard to hard to figure out which way he's going to go. But uh, you're right. The Westchester defender did a good job staying with him. He is five foot six. John Merklinger is weighs 194 pounds. First and goal for Delaware as the ball is halfway inside the 10 yard line. Delaware trying to even the count here against Westchester. The Rams on top, set it up, and far he is going to be gang tackled as he penetrates inside the 10. First man to hit him was Paul Nanny. He's the linebacker on the right side. Ball placed down between the eight and nine yard line. Where it'll be second down and goal. Merklinger is checking into the Delaware offense once again. This time, Kaysan is going to check out. And now we have the officials stepping in. And Westchester a little bit uh, confused. Uh, a couple of Golden Rams with their helmets off, but now they put them back on. It is hot. It is humid. In the 90s here at Delaware Stadium this opening weekend. Second and goal, midway between the eight and nine yard line. Far Reader, Reader to the five. Then he is smacked hard. Maida got a shoulder into him. Also with Sean Niles. And now Westchester says, we do want a timeout. There's a timeout on the field with the score. Westchester seven, Delaware nothing but driving. Hello and welcome to H.A. Winston's. At H.A. Winston's you can enjoy a variety of warm and comfortable atmospheres, whether for dinner or for cocktails. The menu features our world-famous onion soup, fresh salad. And don't forget the free salad card. And Italian specialties, fresh seafood, and fine chicken delicacies. Top off your meal with one of our homemade desserts. The friendly and courteous service invites you to relax and enjoy yourself at H.A. Winston's. 100 Elkton Road in historic Granary Station, Newark, Delaware. Won't you join us? When I asked Karen to be my wife, I wanted a special engagement ring. I went to Continental Jewelry. They showed me a lot of diamonds in the setting so I could see for myself why some diamonds are worth so much more than others. At Continental, they're professional. They give an accurate gem lab analysis on any diamond so you're certain to get quality and they spend the time to make sure you're satisfied. I was proud to give Karen a ring I knew was special from Continental Jewelers. University of Delaware knocking on the goal. They've been down there before, unable to score in the first quarter as Westchester stopped them on a fourth down play. Westchester leading it at seven and nothing as we return to action. Third down and goal. The football just inside the Westchester five yard line. Tim Slagle is now in it right halfback for the Hens. Kaysan. Kaysan stopped behind the line of scrimmage. Good. Defensive pressure breaking through the middle guard. Greg Corbo. Corbo, as I said, Howard, not with that good size, but he has good quickness. 5'10", 217 pounder. He just flipped through there, got Kaysan, and Kaysan goes down for a loss. Apparently, he's eluding his block rather well because that's the uh, at least the sixth tackle he's been in on. Pat McKee, the center, primarily the man responsible for taking care of Corbo. McKee at 6'2", 242. Corbo sometimes a little too elusive for him. It is fourth and goal from the five and a half yard line. Barr looking. Barr diving and he's going to be stopped short. Barr diving but coming up short as he is piled up inside the two yard line. The primary stopper was Bob Grundy. Grundy doing an excellent job on defense. He is the right cornerback, a junior, very young Golden Ram unit that Otto Nidinger is putting on the football field this season. 
And that's twice that they've stopped Delaware inside the five-yard line. Let's give some credit to the Rams' uh, defensive secondary on that play. That was obviously a pass play, but no one was open. They had everybody covered, and then Grundy covered John Spar, Horrock, Irving, nothing. They just stack him up, they being primarily Sean Riley, one of three experienced linebackers that Toby Raymond is employing. Riley is joined in the linebacking crew by Captain Greg Robertson and also by Joe Quigg. The Rams pick up about a yard on the play. Second down and nine from deep in their own territory. Again Irving, again nothing. This time he's going to lose a step or two. The primary hit made it on that time by Jeff Housenshield, veteran defensive tackle on the right side. It'll be third and between nine and ten for the Golden Rams. Nine minutes, three seconds till halftime. Westchester in front, seven to nothing. As Delaware's offense has been stopped twice inside the Westchester five-yard line. Quick kick. And it, I believe, was partially blocked at the line of scrimmage. It's going to take a Westchester roll out over the 30 to the 32-33 yard line. But Westchester kicking the football away. And that play came off so quick, Howard, that I didn't even catch the number of the young fellow who did the kicking. I believe it was Irving. I believe you're right. Uh, he didn't get a very good kick away, though, and that's what happens sometimes on that uh, on the quick kick on the third down. But faced with the situation Westchester had, if they'd have went to fourth down uh, as deep as he would have been in the end zone, they could have been in trouble because Delaware would have been coming. Delaware with another opportunity here, trailing at 7 to nothing. They'll have first and 10 at the Westchester 33-yard line. That's higher, slot right. Barr spins away from one man, spins away from another, and is finally down at the 28-yard line, falling on top of him for Westchester is Mark Muston, the right defensive end. He's another junior for head coach Otto Neidinger. The pickup on the play is a little bit better than three. Now closer to four, we'll call it second down and six. Merklinger is in as a slot of the right side. Kaysan in motion. They're going to give it to Reeder. Reeder's got a first down as he charges inside the 20. Down to the 16-yard line. Danny Reeder played his high school football at Christiana High School under Tom Coder, who is now the head freshman coach here at the University of Delaware. Went to Boston College, didn't like it up in the Northeast, decided to come back home, and was the Hens' leading rusher a year ago with a little under 800 yards. And that was as a uh, part-time starter, not because uh, he was replaced by anyone better, but simply because he was having a lot of injury problems. First and 10 at the 17-yard line, Merklinger in motion. Slagle. This is Timmy Slagle from Elkton, Maryland. First carry in the 83 season. And it's going to be a short one. Although he does punch the football just inside the 15-yard line. McConaughey makes the stop. That's Bill McConaughey. He's the left defensive end. The long two on the pickup. Merklinger checks out. Higher checks back in. Do the Delaware offensive set. Pat McKee wanted to know what the count was going to be. Higher in motion. Far. Looking. Throws it. Almost intercepted. A couple of Golden Rams ran into each other. Had they not, John Niles had himself for sure. An interception. Far over the middle. Dangerous pass. And I don't know who he was trying to throw the football to, Howard, because there were at least three or four white shirts crossing in front, and Niles almost picked it off. It'll be third down and eight at Westchester's 15-yard line. Far again. 
He throws it. It is out of the hands, over the outstretched hands of the intended receiver. Sager, Tibby Sager, the tight end. At the five-yard line, and Delaware coming up now with fourth down, and we're going to have a field goal try. Casey Knobloch is no longer here. Perennial star kicker for Delaware. John Gasson. He kicks it. It's long enough. And it's good. There is a timeout on the field with the score. Westchester 7, Delaware 3. The finest in Oriental cuisine is what you can always expect at both Wing Wah Restaurant locations, 3901 Concord Pike and the Chestnut Hill Plaza in Newark. Succulent Cantonese dishes such as Seven Stars Around the Moon or Sweet and Sour Pork are a specialty at Wing Wah where they feature combination family dinners and exotic cocktails. The entire menu is available for takeout service and they have complete facilities for parties, receptions, or group luncheons. Experience the Orient at the House of Wing Wah Oriental Restaurant. When my small business grew, I talked to the people at Entree Computer Center. At Entree, they took the time to find out what my business needs were. They introduced me to affordable, reliable computer systems, and they even offered classes, installation, and continued service after the sale. Because the Entree franchise of Wilmington is privately owned, I received professional, personalized service from people who understood my business needs. We are set to go again. John Gasson, who has just hit a field goal for Delaware, kicks off. And it's going to be Irving at the goal line. To the 10. 20. 25. Slide down and out of bounds goes Irving out over the 30 at the 32-yard line. Now let's check out the flag, of course. The flag thrown down around the 25-yard line. And they're going to step it off against the Golden Rams. And let's check out the call. It is clipping against Westchester. They'll put the football out at the 12-yard line. But Westchester has the lead here in the second quarter with 6.32 to go, 7-3. to three. John Gaston hitting the field goal just a moment ago for Delaware. And now the officials uh, want the Golden Rams to go back and huddle up again. Mike Harrock, junior quarterback. This is your rich. Not much as he punches out to the 16-yard line. Greg Robertson with assistance making the stop for Delaware. John Gannon, the defensive end on the right side for the Blue Hens, makes the stop along with Robertson. Pickup is three from the 12 out to the 15. Second down and seven. Horrocks, nothing as he's wrapped up quickly. Coming across very quickly was Captain Greg Robertson for the Blue Hens. And Horrocks is stopped right at the line of scrimmage. And it'll bring up a third down and seven situation for Westchester. But the Rams have the lead here at seven to nothing. Sunbaked Delaware Stadium opening week of football for both the Golden Rams and the Fighting Blue Hens. Horrocks, he wants to throw. He's got a man, but it's out of bounds. Diving for the football here on the near side. For Westchester was Brunita. Check it, Eric Bossard. He's a young fellow from Dover, Delaware. 
He dived for the football, but it was a little bit too long. He had been open a half a count sooner, but Horrocks unable to deliver the football on time. Fourth down, punting situation. Becker will be in to do the punting. He's the reserve quarterback. It's low. James has got it at the 42. And he gets a round of appreciation from the crowd, Howard, for just catching the football. He's been letting them bounce around down there, but this time he does make the catch and returns the football to the Westchester 47 and a half yard line. Where the blue ends will take over. In arrears here at 7-3. Led home quest along with Howard Gessner at the University of Delaware Stadium. It's opening day for both the Blue Hens and the Golden Rams of Westchester State College. First and 10 at the 48 of Westchester. Here is Reeder. What a hole. Reeder, 35-yard line. He blew through there because blowing the hole open for him was Pat McKee and Mark Rossi. They just blew Corbo, the middle guard, right back. That time, it was no match. Corbo's had his uh, moments in this football game, but that time, it was absolutely no match. It is a quick first down pickup, and Danny Reeder is having himself a fine first half against Westchester's defense. First and 10 at the 34 and a half yard line. Far fumbling the football. The Rams die for it. Do they have it? The official says, yes, Westchester has the football. Coming up with the football is Greg Corbo. Well, Corbo got blown out on the first play, but boy, did he ever make men's in the second play, Howard. Again, it was a bad snap. Well, not a bad snap. The snap was all right, but it looks like uh, Farr was trying to break away before he got the ball. And he is probably having uh, some problems with perspiration. It is warm. We're in the 90s here. First and 10 for Westchester as Delaware fumbles the football away again. Horrocks wants to throw. Cannons after him. Here is the pass complete. And Westchester has the football in Delaware territory. That's Ulrich, Rich Ulrich out of the backfield to the 40-yard line of Delaware. Horrocks that time eluding the pressure. And the pressure was coming in the form of John Gannon. He's the right defensive end. But Horrocks stepped away from it. Found Ulrich. Ulrich finds a first down in Delaware territory at the 40-yard line. Back split behind Horrocks, the quarterback. Here is obvious motion. The flags fly all over the place. And the step-off will go against Westchester. And they'll mark the football back to the 45-yard line. First down and 15. Horrocks with receivers left and right. He's going to look in quickly, and he's going to hit his big receiver, Reggie Hines. Hines gets back with a loss on the penalty, plus some as he penetrates inside the Delaware 35-yard line. That's Reggie Hines. Good target for Horrocks. Hines is six foot four, 217 pounds. And it'll be second down and four at the 34-and-a-half yard line. Twin receivers this time. For Horrocks, the quarterback, as we get a look from their end zone camera. Horrocks, straight back. Throws the football wide open across the middle and taking it in for a first down inside the 20-yard line for the Golden Rams is Paul Eisenberg. And there's another Delaware product. He also attended Dover High School. Paul Eisenberg, and the stop is made only by Eric Hammett, but not before Eisenberg. Had achieved the first down at the 19-yard line. He was just wide open across the middle, and Horrocks put it right on the money. Irving and Ulrich put back behind Horrocks. 
Again, he's straight back. He's going to flare it out to Irving. 20, 15, and he dives forward inside the 15-yard line. Sean Riley makes the stop on him, but not before. Irving does achieve good yardage on the little flare pass from Horrocks. They'll give him a pickup of a little bit more than four. We're going to call it second down and five. The back split behind Horrocks. This is Yorich. Yorich with the first down, or close to the first down, as he dives inside the 10-yard line. Greg Robertson, the captain for Delaware. Greg Robertson, the first in-state captain here at the University of Delaware in 10 years. The last homebred, uh, as it were, to be captain here at Delaware was Jeff Cat. open roads with true performance. Two-wheeled cycle combines a complete line of quality bicycles, accessories for every cyclist's needs, and service to optimize performance of your present bicycle. Come in and talk with experienced professionals. See what's new on two wheels and ride into the experience. In today's world, old values are still important. Values like hard work, dedication and attention to detail, a belief that results are important, that people deserve service and reliability. B. Gary Scott Realtors believe in doing things right. Try us. B. Gary Scott, your key to a better tomorrow. Where in 10 years, the last homebred, uh, as it were, to be captain here at Delaware was Jeff Cannon from Georgetown. That was 10 years ago. Time does have a way of moving on very quickly. It is first and goal for Westchester, leading here at 7-3 and threatening. Here's the pitch. Irving, he bounces off of one man. He's sacked at the five-yard line, but did he ever bounce? Off of the first defender who came up to meet him, that was Ken Pulaski, the free safety, and Irving gave him a shoulder and danced his way free. They put the football down at the four-yard line. There will be second down and goal. Engel checks out. That's a spread receiver. And they're going to go with two tight ends. Are the Golden Rams... Delaware coming on a blitz. Here is the pitch to the free foot of Ulrich. He's diving. Touchdown. Rich Ulrich. Going some speed. 5'9", 175 pounds, junior. It's an all-junior backfield. Starting offensively for the Golden Rams. And the Rams have come to play from Westchester. They are charged up. Their defense twice has stopped Delaware inside the five-yard line. They did give up a field goal to the Blue Hens, but they have scored twice now. Once on the long jump, straight at the middle by Irving, and this time on Ulrich as he skirts his own right end. Here's the snapback. Tyrone Jones, he kicks it. It looks good. It is good. There is a timeout on the field with the score. Westchester 14, Delaware 3. Tyrone Jones, he's on the football again, kicking off for Westchester as they have taken a 14-3 lead over Delaware. James at the 3. He loses the football. And there is a mad scramble for it, and Westchester has got the football up the 30-yard line. Let's see who comes up with it. For the Golden Rams, it is Mike Hudson, a reserve offensive lineman, in with the kickoff team. He dives on the football. James has coughed it up for Delaware. 
And here is Westchester with one minute to go until halftime, leading here at 14 to three with a golden opportunity to make it more. And this is Delaware, Westchester, the hands have won 15 years in a row. We've got a long way to go today, but Westchester's putting on a show. Farrock, he's passing, he's got his receiver, breaking free is Hines, touchdown. Reggie Hines. And there is Tubby Raymond. Gone to get a drink or a piece of cold ice to cool himself off. It's hot and humid at Delaware, and Tubby, believe me, is hotter and more humid. One place I wouldn't want to be in a couple of minutes is in the Delaware locker room. Well, I'm sure that Tubby's going to have some words for the Blue Hens, but fine. With Horrocks throwing the football, they connect Tyrone Jones. He kicks it. And Westchester has broken on top here at 21 to 3. That was a one play drive, if you want to call it a drive. It was Hines, the big tight end, all six foot four of them, taking it on a crossing batter from his quarterback, Mike Horrocks, for the touchdown. 30 yards, Westchester 21, Delaware 3, and will return to Delaware Stadium in just a moment. Super E Plus a new symbol for excellence in energy efficient homes. For years, home buyers have needed a program that certifies energy saving construction. So Delmarva Power, with the help of builders and architects, has developed Super E Plus. The result, year-round living comfort, high retail value, and money saving efficiency. To find out more, contact your Delmarva Power District office and discover the benefits of Super E Plus. Again, Tyrone Jones kicks off for Westchester here at Delaware Stadium as the stadium crowd is shocked as Westchester leads the football game 21-3. This is Payton. He fumbles the football. And are they going to mark him down? No, they are going to mark Payton down. The Westchester fans here on the near side where we're broadcasting from, they're not very happy with the call, but it did appear, Howard, that as his knee hit, the ball came out. And once your knee hits, you're down. Yeah, his knee touched the ground before the ball came loose. Of course, uh, from the Westchester point of view, I, I can understand why they'd want the ball back again. Absolutely. 45 seconds remain here in the first half. The Delaware Partisan stunned by the Westchester Golden Rams. It's 21 to 3. Far. He throws the football. He's got a receiver. It's going to be Sager, but Sager is going to be short of a first down at the 35-yard line, and Delaware needs a whole lot more than just an eight-yard pass completion as the clock is running. And now Delaware has asked for and is receiving a timeout. There is a timeout on the field with the score, Westchester 21, the University of Delaware 3. Delaware facing a second and two at their own 34-yard line, but they need a whole lot more than two because they're trailing here at 21 to three. Clock running out of the first half. Here's the interception by Westchester. Far trying to hit his receiver Hammond, and the ball is picked off, intercepted, and making the interception was Paul Nanny. The Westchester defense, Howard, has been superb. That's the only word I can use here in the first half. They've stopped Delaware twice inside the five-yard line. They've given up three points. They have just played a superb first half. I think that's got to be one of the primary concerns of the Delaware coaching staff at halftime is the inability to uh, finish off, uh, so to speak. The first time Delaware got the ball, they, uh, in all running plays, they went 83 yards and, and came up short on a fourth fourth down at the four-yard line, and uh, when you control the ball that long, you should put some points on the board. 23 seconds remaining here in the first half, and Westchester would like to have more. They lead at 21 to 3, a 70-yard touchdown run. Got this one started for Westchester. Mike Irving doing it in the second quarter. Rich Ulrich started his own right in for a touchdown. And then the pass play combination of 30 yards following a Delaware fumble. The touchdown reception by Reggie Hines, thrown by quarterback Mike Horrocks. And Horrocks would like more, I'm sure. 
Arox throwing it, but he overshoots his receiver. The intended receiver was the spread end, Ray Engel. He had broken behind Jimmy Newfrock. And Engel is going to come off to the sideline. And he'll be replaced by Eric Bossert out of Dover High School in Dover, Delaware. Second down at the Delaware 44-yard line. Bossert splits into the near sideline out of our camera view. Split back behind Harrock. Harrock, he's going to throw it. He's got Irving trying to get Irving free over the middle. He does dance away for a couple of extra yards, but he is short of a first down, and Westchester is signaling that they would like to have a timeout. We'll keep it right here. Ten seconds remaining on the first half clock here at Delaware Stadium, and it is a stunned and rather quiet crowd here at the stadium where the Hens have not lost a home opener since 1975. Wittenberg turning the trick on that date, and I was here in 1975 when they lost that home opener, 14 to 8. And more importantly, Howard, the fact that they haven't beaten Westchester, the check at Westchester hasn't beaten Delaware in 15 years, and Delaware has always had their way, and they have had none of their way this first half. No, it's all Westchester so far. They're running when they want, they're passing when they want, and they're making the play defensively. Second down and a long three at the 37 and a half yard line. Horrock under some pressure. He's going to jump it off and taking the reception is Irving. Irving's got away from one man and he is backtracking as he throws the football in the air. But the official is going to rule that the play was dead at the 32 yard line. And there is the end of the first half of football. And it has been a surprise to say the least here at Delaware Stadium on opening day for the Delaware Blue Hens. The Golden Rams of Westchester State College from just up the road a bit in Westchester, Pennsylvania have a 21-3 lead as we hit halftime and we'll be back in just a moment. How do you really know when you're overweight? When you step on the scale and the scale steps back. When your zipper has finally lost its zip. When trying to go up really gets you down. You can lose that extra weight and still enjoy balanced filling meals with Nutrisystem from Weight Loss Medical Centers. No calorie counting, no difficult food decisions. Nutrisystem is a pre-measured, pre-packaged, and medically supervised eating program. Call now for a free consultation. Weight Loss Medical Centers. from Citizen, the watchword. Available locally at the Big Elk Mall in Elkton, Maryland. As a special feature during halftime activities of University of Delaware football 1983, Spectra Vision has produced special segments on each college contained within the University of Delaware here in Newark. And today our feature at halftime is the College of Marine Studies. The University of Delaware's College of Marine Studies was founded in 1970 to educate graduate students and to conduct oceanographic research. It's the administrative home of the university's Sea Grant program, and it has facilities in both Newark and Lewis, Delaware. To study the sea, you have to go to where the action is. And so today, we're going to go to sea on board the university's unique research vessel, the Cape Henlopen, where Dr. John Sharp is studying the dynamics of the Delaware estuary so that its resources can be managed more effectively. I assume one of the reasons why you're doing research on this particular estuary is because estuaries are important places. Talk to me a little bit about that. Yes, estuaries are very important because they're basically a mixing ground between the land and the sea. The influences from land are diluted as the water mixes with seawater, and seawater is diluted by the freshwater mixing back up the estuary. 
Estuaries are very important also because they are richer environments and have higher productivity and hence have more fish and shellfish production than the open ocean does. When you take a look at this from the, the point of view of fisheries, it would seem to me that your research is particularly important. Is that accurate? It is in that we're trying to get at the basis of the food chain. We're getting at the beginnings of the food chain to try to understand what supports the shellfish and fish production. At present, we're not doing a great deal of work on the fisheries, but are beginning in this next year to do a little bit of work on oysters and on weak fish, as well as blue crabs, which are some of the major commercial and sports fisheries in the bay. Let's talk a little bit, if we can, about the research vessel and its role in all of this. Clearly, research along this nature, along these lines, would be impossible without a research vessel. Is that the far side, 15, gets away from one man, but cannot get away from two more, as the blue hen hem him in far across the way. One of those making the initial hit on the sideline was Jay Curcio. Curcio, a reserve linebacker out of the Philadelphia area. And here is Delaware on defense to start the second half. And across the defensive front for the Blue Ends, Vaughn Dickinson and John Gannon are the ends. Eric Leak, Leaks and Jeff Howdenshield are the defensive tackles. First and ten, the ball at the 20-yard line. Barak, he's going to keep it and go little. Not much running room as Harrock manages to burrow ahead for a couple of yards. Gannon, Robertson, and Eric Leeks are in on the stop. It's a gain of, well, it's a little bit more than I expected, Howard. To, I thought he would maybe pick up one, but he got himself three. He gave that little extra push, and that's what Westchester's been doing every time they run the ball. Actually, I guess he just laid down. He's six foot three. It is second down and seven. The ball at the 23-yard line. Horrock back. He's got a receiver on the far side, but unable to bring in the high throw was Hines. And he was covered by Jimmy Newfrock. Newfrock arriving at the same time the ball got there on the sideline. Hines had to go high and unable to bring it in. It'll bring up a third down and eight. Engel checks in. And Bossard checks out. That's a spread receiver for the Golden Rams, who have been golden on this bright and warm Saturday at Delaware Stadium. Harrock straight back. Throws the football. Is it intercepted? No. Diving and trying to make the interception was Mike Paris out of Salesiana, but unable to come up with the football at the 35-yard line. Harris uh, a little bit upset with himself for not being able to make the interception. And Becker will come on and punt it away for Westchester. That's Ron Becker. He's the reserve quarterback. There are not too many coaches who like to have the reserve quarterback being kicker. Here comes the blue, and he gets it off, and it's going to drive James back to the 30. And he is jumped as he comes up over the 35 to the 37-yard line. The hit on him is made by Bob Campbell. Reserve in with the kicking unit. And Delaware will have it in arrears here at 21 to 3. They'll operate from their own 37 yard line. I think the thing Delaware has to realize right here is that they can't get these three touchdowns back all at once. They've got to do what they did well in the first half, and that's control the ball by running it. They drove the football exceptionally well in the first half. Stopped twice inside the Westchester five yard line. Reader who gained a lot of yardage in the first half with 89, I believe. Nanny makes the hit on him here, and Reeder doesn't pick up too much as he gets back to the line of scrimmage, and that is all. They stack him up. So no gain after Reeder in the first half had picked up 89 yards on 13 attempts. With a good key blind, blocking up front from Pat McKee and the two guards, Doug Martin and Mark Rossi. Here is Reeder again. He fumbles the football but manages to dive on it himself. That always had its problems holding on to the football. John Spar losing the handle a couple of times in the first half. Mark Muston making the stop, by the way, on the last play for Westchester. 
Reeder does manage to pick up close to five. We'll call it third down, and we'll call it six at the 42-yard line. Double wing formation. Barr's going to throw it. He's got a receiver. Pontiacus can't hold on to the football. Had it, tried to go too soon, and lost it at the midfield stripe. Had the first down achieved, but unable to hold on to the football. And Delaware will be forced to punt as we've got a blue hen shaken up across the way. Anderson, Mike Anderson, coming on to do the punting. Irving and Holmes go deep for Westchester. Here is a wild snap. Anderson, he's got time. Now he's going to throw the football. It's going to be taken in, but Westchester's going to have a golden opportunity. Mike Anderson appeared power to have all day to punt the football. I, I'm surprised that he didn't try to punt the football. His pass was good, but not nearly enough for a first down way behind the line of scrimmage. The only other possibility was that it was a fake all along, but I hardly doubt that. He, did, actually, he had plenty of time to get the ball away. Well, I'll tell you, if it's a fake all along and the center snaps it over your head, you cancel the fake. At the 22-yard line, Westchester leading Delaware 21-3 and looking for more. They cashed in on opportunities in the first half. Let's see if they can do it here in the second half. Barak just dives forward. He's got a couple. Down to about the 20. The pile is there. That'll mean Greg Robertson and Eric Leak and Jeff Howdenfield and Vaughn Dickinson. Two yards is the pickup for junior quarterback Mike Harrock. Otto Nottinger, head coach at Westchester, starting an all-junior backfield. Rich Ulrich, the right halfback. Mike Irving, the left halfback. And the flanker is Drew O'Brien. We haven't heard from O'Brien, though. Second down and eight at the 20. Our auction's going to give it to Irving. Touchdown! Just a quick pop play, similar to what Irving went 70 yards on in the first half, and this time... He goes 20 yards, boom, Westchester 27, Delaware 3, Howard, who would have thunk it? He went through a hole that you could have, you could have run six guys through there. That apparently there was no one even lined up there. That hole provided by left tackle Vern Hahn and left guard Mark Palladino, and they blew the blue ends back, and Irving sprinted for the 20-yard score. The spot. Tyrone Jones out of the hold of reserve quarterback Becker, and it's good. It is Westchester 28, Delaware 3. Tyrone Jones kicking off again for Westchester, and he's going to give it to Kaysan at the 5. Behind the wedge, 10, 15, and he just piles ahead out over the 20, close to the 25-yard line. So Westchester has got everybody stunned. It is a very quiet crowd at Delaware Stadium as the Blue Hens find themselves in arrears now by the count of 28 to 3. They were down 21 to 3 in the at the end of the first half. And Howard, uh, I am stunned just as much as anybody else is. It is quarterback John Spar. We were anticipating maybe a switch to B.J. Webster. After Delaware's sluggish first half, here is Spar rolling to the 30, and he's out of bounds. Close to the 32, 33 yard line. Two or three white shirts forcing him out of bounds. Primary hitter was Doug Jacobs. Spar does manage to pick up yardage. Second down and three will be what the Blue Hens will face from their own 32-yard line, but they face a 25-point deficit right now. Kaysan sets up as a wing on the right side. In motion. Reeder looking for the first down, and he's going to have the first down as he drags a couple of tacklers with him. The ball comes free. Westchester's pointing that we've got it. But the officials are going to say no. The ball was down. And Reeder achieves a first down as they mark the football at the 36-yard line. 
Shelby Raymond on the sideline showing concern, uh, concern enough now that he has changed quarterback John Farr out and B.J. Webster is in to run the offense. Webster rolling. Got a blocker in front of him. And he's going to go close to another first down as he steps out of bounds close to the 45-yard line. I guess Tubby, after seeing what Farr could do in the first half and early here in the third quarter, decided to make a switch. B.J. Webster and John Farr, according to Tubby, very close all through preseason. Farr got the starting nod, but now it is Webster in as Delaware has not been able to produce a touchdown here in the first game against Westchester. Uh, Webster's got a little more experience from last year in passing. He threw the ball 24 times last year, and uh, Spar only threw it 15. Here's Reeder. First down. Moore as he powers to the 45-yard line of Westchester, and that'll put him over the 100-yard mark for the day at 89 in the first half, and he has easily picked up better than 11 to achieve the 100-yard game. And they are expecting big things out of homebred Danny Reeder here at Delaware this season. Played last year off and on in the early portion of the year. Bothered by nagging injuries, but came on strong. Picked up nearly 800 yards rushing. Here he rushes for a first down to the Westchester 45. Webster wants to throw. Here are flags. Check it, not flags, but whistles. As the ball sits between the defender and the intended receiver, Paul Hammond. Back there with him is Bob Grundy. They just sit down and have the football between them. But now the step off will go against Delaware. Says referee Robert Brandt. And it'll be a five yard step off right back to the midfield stripe. Delaware, illegal procedure is the call. So they'll face first and 15 from midfield. Third quarter action at Delaware Stadium on this opening weekend. Westchester stunning Delaware so far at 28 to 3. Merklinger is in the offensive backfield. Here is Webster under a rush. Gets away from one man, cannot get away from a second. And grabbing the shoe and not letting go on a good defensive stop was Doug Jacobs. And he dumps Webster. For a substantial loss, they'll put it down at Delaware's 42-yard line. That's an eight-yard loss, and the Hens will now be faced with second down and 23 yards. Delaware could very easily have been called for clipping on that play also. Uh, Merkinger uh, clearly blocked someone from behind. Here is Paul Hammond, spread receiver into the near sideline. Again, double wing backfield, primarily a passing offense, a passing set for the Hens, and B.J.'s going to go back. He's under pressure. He swings it out to Sager. It's a tight end screen, and Sager's not going to go very far as he gets back to the line of scrimmage, and that is about it. Westchester has done an exceptional job of getting ready defensively. Now, I know uh, they have 28 points on the board here, Howard, but defensively, they have done the job. The front line has been exceptional. They've, they've been in the Delaware backfield all afternoon. Third down and 24 as the reception goes for a yard loss back to the 41-yard line. Merklinger in motion. Webster's going to throw the football, and he overshoots his intended receiver, cutting across three at the 50-yard line with Paul Hammond. And the Hens are going to have to punt it away. Mike Anderson will come on to do the job for Delaware. Brand new punter this year. Mike Anderson. Sophomore from Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. He'll spot it from his own 30. Just over the 30-yard line. Low. And Irving's going to signal for a fair catch. At the 30-yard line, there is a timeout on the field with the score, Westchester 28, Delaware 3. In today's world, old values are still important. Values like hard work, dedication, and attention to detail. 
a belief that results are important, that people deserve service and reliability. B. Jerry Scott Realtors believe in doing things right. Try it. B. Gary Scott, your key to a better tomorrow. New York's finest seafood restaurant is the Crab Trap. The Crab Trap specializes in serving you the best of the Chesapeake Bay and open ocean seafood fare. Their delicacies of the deep include fresh lobster, steamed clams, succulent flounder, and live blue claw crabs. The Crab Trap serves you and your family in a charming dockside atmosphere. The Crab Trap is conveniently located on the University of Delaware campus at the corner of Amstel Avenue and Elkton Road in Newark. When you think seafood, think the Crab Trap. Westchester taking over on offense. They lead it here in the third quarter against Delaware, 28-3. Mike Carrock all the way at quarterback for the Golden Rams. He pitches the ball to Holmes. Holmes has a little running room and then quickly coming over and feeling off the hole is middle linebacker and captain Greg Robertson. Holmes does manage to turn up to the 36-yard line. Quick pickup of six. It'll be second down and four. Engel checks in. And Bossard checks out. That's its spread receiver for the Golden Rams. They have scored in the air on a 30-yard touchdown pass from Horrocks to Reggie Hines. Irving has gone twice for scores, once from 70 yards out, the initial score of the football game. Here is Irving. 45. He's into Delaware territory, down the sideline, and he is finally struck down by Harris at the 30 check it 28 yard line and he did a nice job of pipe rope walking the sideline i thought maybe it stepped out at about the 43 yard line howard but he did the job and harris had to finally bounce him down he came very close but he was able to maintain his balance and that's the type of runner he is you can't uh, assume that he's going to uh go down easy or fall off balance 70 yard touchdown in the first half 20 yard score for irving here in the second half first and 10 at the Delaware 28 yard line for Westchester threatening for more. Horrocks, he's got the ball close to the 20 yard line and he's dragging Jeff Houghtonfield, the defensive tackle with him. Also Vaughn Dickinson collaborating. Dickinson, the new defensive end. Westchester in the first half picked up a total of six first downs with their 21 points. Delaware had 12 first downs, but twice, remember, twice stopped inside the Westchester five-yard line. It is second down and three, just outside the Delaware 20-yard line. And here, Horrocks, his count is just a little bit too long. He took a rather long look as Paul Eisenberg the tight end from Dover, Delaware, who goes to Westchester, broke behind him in motion. And Westchester will be hit with the penalty, pushing the football back to the 25-yard line. Change in the Delaware defensive front. Leach is out. And we'll have to check his replacement in just a moment. Hines. Sets up tight on the right side. Here goes Eisenberg in motion to the far side. Horrocks under rush. Down he goes. The stop is made on him by the new defensive performer, Charles Bryce. Bryce listed as a defensive end, and that's where he came from to make the stop on the play. And Horrocks that time goes down under the rush. Actually, Bryce listed as a defensive end but he's the backup tackle on the left side he replaced leach he's a sophomore 233 pounder and he did the job on horrocks that time pushing the football back to the 32 yard line it's third down and 14. horrocks under pressure again and again it's bryce charles bryce two consecutive plays after breaking into the defensive front and he pushes Westchester back to the 40-yard line, and the Golden Rams are going to punt the football away. Bryce on two consecutive plays, really doing the job. Bryce is only a sophomore, Len. He's 5'11", 236. He comes from West Lawn, Pennsylvania. 
Now here is an 11th man arriving on the field late for Westchester. Becker, the reserve quarterback, punts it. He's under a rush, but he gets it off. It's tangling to the corner, but it's going to go in for a touchback. Delaware will have the full football, first and 10 on their own 20-yard line. There's a timeout on the field with a score. Westchester, 28, Delaware, 3. John Farr is back in at quarterback for the Blue Hens. And he's going to put the football in the air. He's going to deliver, and it is not held by Hammond. Hammond drops one. Farr had an earlier one dropped on him. Slippery hands on a hot and humid Saturday for football, Howard. The ball was a little bit low, but it, it was catchable. Hammond trying to slide down to make sure he stayed in bounds as he went for the football. Merklinger checks into the offensive set for Delaware. We've moved to the five-minute mark in the third quarter. Delaware trailing by 28 to 3. Second down and 10 from the 20. Far gets the football off, and it's almost intercepted. Joe Maida, captain and defensive standout, almost picking the football off at the 35-yard line. And I'll tell you, Howard, uh, it probably wouldn't have gone for a touchdown because he did step in front, but his momentum was going for the sideline. But you give Westchester an opportunity right now, and they're liable to just put it way out of Delaware's reach. It's going to be tough for Delaware to come back right now. Time is definitely a factor. Time is going to be a factor because we have reached the five-minute mark of the third quarter, and Delaware has really not had any kind of offense here in the second half. They're going to give it to Reeder just straight ahead. He's got five. But when it's third and 10 and you're in arrears by 25 at your own 20-yard line, that will bring up the Boo Birds. And we are hearing some here at Delaware Stadium. Actually, Reader's knee hit at the 24-yard line. Fourth down, punting situation. Mike Anderson comes on to do the job. Good snap this time. He gets it off under pressure. Irving signaling fair catch, and he's going to take it in at the 37-yard line, and Westchester will take over first and 10. Under five minutes, under four and a half minutes remaining here in the third quarter of action at Delaware Stadium. This is Len Holmes West along with Howard Gessner, hoping that you'll be with us each week during the Delaware 1983 football campaign. Next weekend, we'll be in Colonial Williamsburg as Delaware goes on the road to face William and Mary, and the Hens always have trouble with William and Mary when they play in Williamsburg. Horrocks. He's going to pitch the football. It is caught by Hines, and he is quickly knocked down by Pulaski, the strong side safety, but not before the reception is made up over the 43-yard line, close to the 44-yard line. Six-yard gain on the play. Hit on him is made by Jimmy Pulaski, the identical twin of Ken Pulaski, who is the free safety. Second down and four. Eisenberg out of our picture in a slot to the far side. Harrock, he's going to give it to Irving. This time Irving is stood up by Bryce. Irving twice has gone through his own right side. That's the Delaware left side defensively, and maybe that's why we have the change with Leach going out and Charles Bryce now coming in. Irving is stopped short. We're going to need about a yard. Westchester needing a yard here on third down. Irving. Chugging ahead, flag down. Penalty flag is thrown as Irving tried to jump forward for the first down. And now we'll have to check out the penalty. Irving appeared to be stopped short of the first down marker. Holding Westchester. And that will push the Rams back. Irving had not achieved that first down. Delaware would be getting the football probably on a punting situation, but I think the Hens want to get Westchester back as far as they can toward their own goal line. It would not surprise me, Len, if Westchester were, or if Delaware were to refuse the penalty to see Westchester go for the first down with the lead that they have. Well, you're right, because they are bringing out the chains, and we're going to get a stretch, and they're going to be just short. 
and I mean just short, inches short, and it'll be very surprising. Let's see what Delaware does. They called for the measurement before they decided whether or not they wanted to take the penalty. Well, it's obvious now that Delaware's going to take the penalty, not knowing and not leaving it up to Otto Neidinger and his staff at Westchester to decide whether to gamble on fourth down and leading by 28 to 3. They'll push Westchester back to their own 36 yard line. Where it'll be third down, they'll need 11. Check if they need more than 11, they need close to 15. And here's a receiver dropping the football. Irving discussed it with himself. He had a free shot at that football. Was looking back into the sun, but he should have had it, Howard, and he knows it. It was six points if he caught it. Absolutely right, because there was nothing in front of him but stripes and green grass. Becker will punt it away. James is back for Delaware. High punt. James is going to take it in, going to fumble it, and pick it up. And then he is going to get away from two shirts, three white shirts. James finally puts a little excitement into the return game here for the Blue Hens after fumbling the football. Manages to pick it up and gets it out to the 30-yard line or close to the 30-yard line. And we have a Westchester Golden Ram shaken up down here on the 10-yard line. Slow getting up for the Rams is Bob Campbell. Campbell is the center. I believe I identified him earlier as an offensive tackle, but he is the center and the starting center for the Golden Rams. Shaken on the play. Delaware will take over with two minutes, 41 seconds remaining to be played here in the third quarter, but they're in arrears are the Blue Hens, 28 to three, Westchester has played superb defensively and offensively. They got a great big 70-yard touchdown run from Mike Irving. Here is Farr back in the quarterback. He's on the far sideline. He is just dancing around, and finally, after uh, stumbling uh, from the sideline back in toward the center of the football field, we do have a flag on the play, and it's dropped behind Farr, and that usually signals well, it's not trouble in the, well, it is trouble in paradise if you're a Blue End fan, Howard. And I believe it's going to be clipping against one of the, uh, the Delaware linemen. I'll tell you, we may have the tropic kind of weather here today, but it is not paradise for Chubby Raymond and the Delaware Blue Hens. Referee Robert Brandt. Stepping off the football, and they're going to step it off from the 24-yard line. Mark it half the distance to the goal line. A little bit more than half the distance. Now he steps out to the 12. They'll place the football down at the 12-yard line. The infraction, a clip. As so often the case, when a flag is dropped behind the ball carrier, it is a clip. And now we have a discussion among the officials. Flipping is the call, and it'll be first and 10 for Delaware. At their own 12, they'll need 28. First and 28. Higher, slot right. Now back in motion. Far, he wants to keep the football, and they've got him stocked up at the 15-yard line. The ball comes free. Westchester's got it. And there were a host of white shirts around. Paul Nanny gets recovery of the fumble. He gets the credit. And Westchester has the football at the Delaware 16-yard line. Looking for more. And probably looking for a touchdown that I'm sure the Golden Rams would feel would put it just out of Delaware's reach. They already lead by 25 at 28 to 3 with two minutes and 10 seconds to play here in the third quarter. The 
Here on the first down carry. Bryce making the stop for the Blue Hens. Ball placed down at the 18-yard line. Four-yard pickup on the play. Second down and six. Mike Carrock. His quantity was unknown as a starter, but he's done a good job. He's throwing for a touchdown, and he's got it. Hines, the tight end, Reggie Hines, with the free safety. Kenny Pulaski wrapped around him. Hines brings in his second touchdown pass of the ball game. And Westchester is now pouring it on, 34-3. Howard, I'd throw the mic to you, but I've got a feeling you're like me. You're speechless. A lot of Delaware fans are starting to leave. Well, as I look across the way, there are some Delaware fans starting to leave. Becker will hold. Tyrone Jones trying the extra point. He's been perfect so far. He is still perfect. There is a timeout of the field with a score. Delaware in arrears to Westchester. The Golden Rams, 35. Delaware's Blue Hens, 3. This is Eric Wintling kicking off for Westchester, and Kaysan is way back at the end of his end zone. And just as Delaware has had its problems this afternoon, this opening ball game against Westchester, Howard, I must confess that I've had my problems, too. I have been identifying the wrong kicker the entire football game, and I now owe an apology. The kicker is Eric Wintling. Eric Wintling is the kicker instead of Tyrone Jones. Tyrone is actually on the University of Delaware squad. And apologies to all concerned. C.J. Webster running the show at quarterback from the 20-yard line. Delaware now down, and down goes Webster as the rush has got him, wrapping him up back inside the 15-yard line. Back to the 13-yard line is that Bob Lechner, the big defensive tackle, all 6'5", 235 pounds of him. Delaware has had uh, some success with the middle of their offensive front. Pat McKee, Doug Martin, and Martin Mark Rossi. But I'll tell you, the defensive front for Westchester, McConaughey, Jacob, Corbo, Murphy, and Muston, and Lechner, when he's in there, they've done a great job. Webster's going to throw the football. He's got Sager, and Sager's got the football out over the 20 to the 22-yard line. Picks up what Webster lost on the previous sack, plus a couple of yards. And it'll bring up a third down and eight. Clock stopping as Sager went out of bounds. 43 seconds remaining to be played here in the third quarter. But Westchester, stunned by Delaware for so many years, 15 straight losses to the Blue Hens, achieved all here in Delaware Stadium. They are getting some of it back today. They are getting an awful lot of it back today. Merklinger sets up as a wing back on the right side. Here he comes in motion. Webster. Wants to throw, and it's bat in the air. Coming through and making the bat in the air is Bob Lechner. Lechner making the sack, and then Lechner making the tip on the pass try by B.J. Webster, and Delaware will be forced to punt the football away. It'll be fourth down. Mike Anderson will come on to punt it away. Downfield are Holmes to the near side, and Irving to the far side. It is a low kick, bounding here at the 48-yard line of Westchester, and finally Pulaski checks it as it goes out of bounds right at the midfield stripe. Westchester will take over at midfield. 28 seconds remaining to be played here in the third quarter. Timeout on the field with the score, Westchester 35, Delaware 3. Here is Harrock throwing the football, and he throws it into a mass. And it's deflected at the line of scrimmage. Vaughn Dickinson got his hand in there. 
And I believe that Horrocks may have also bounced the football off of one of his offensive linemen trying to block for him. Second down and 10. Sunbaked Delaware Stadium opening weekend, but it's not been a happy one for the Hens as they trail here to upstart Westchester 35 to 3. Otto Neidinger told me this week he didn't know exactly what he had. Well, he, he may have an awful lot. Here is Horrocks just diving forward. Hattenshield goes down with him. Hattenshield stopping Horrocks after a pickup of about five to the Delaware 45 yard line. It'll be third down and four. Next weekend, Delaware on the road against William and Mary in Colonial Williamsburg, and the Hens have always had trouble when they play William and Mary on the road. The end of the third quarter. There is the end of the third quarter of action here at Delaware Stadium with the score, Westchester 35, Delaware 3. We are ready to begin the fourth and final quarter of action here at Delaware Stadium. Westchester 35, Delaware 3, third down and four at the Delaware 44-yard line. Here's Harrock under pressure. They've got him. One, two, three, four blue shirts are there. And McHale is the first one to jump on him. Let's identify him fully so that he can completely get the recognition that he deserves. That's Joe McRail. Check it, Joe McHale, the linebacker on the left side, shooting through. And stopping back to punt is Becker as the blue shirts come in. They get away from Becker, flag down as Becker has the ball go off his foot. I'll tell you, there were a lot of blue shirts around Becker. And they are going to call Delaware with roughing the punter. Becker went down. Hard to tell whether he was really touched or not, Howard, but he did go down. And he's gone down a couple of times before, and this time the official right on the spot throws the flag. He was touched. Uh, I think he, it was a pretty good job of acting as well, but uh, a Delaware player definitely did run into it. The options are being discussed now. Referee Robert Brandt talking things over with Bob Grundy. Grundy, one of so many on the Westchester defense who have done quite a job here in their opening ball game. Very young, very inexperienced Westchester team coming up against a more experienced University of Delaware squad, but things have gone Westchester's way. That pop, that quick 70-yard pop by Mike Irving at the start of the second quarter really got the juices rolling for Westchester. And they have, by and large, owned things in this contest. Becker will punt it away from his own 40-yard line. Here's the snap. It's high. Here is Becker running to the near sideline. Becker's going to be tripped up as Sean Riley trips him up at the 42-yard line, and maybe that'll get the offense off track for the Blue Hens. They have not produced a touchdown. B.J. Webster is going to come on and run the show. For Delaware, 14 minutes, 18 seconds remaining to be played in the contest, but Delaware in arrears here at 35 to 3. Hammond out of our camera range, flipping to the far side. That's higher, set up as a wing back on the right side. Webster, he's throwing the football. He's got a receiver. It's Sager. He bounces away from one man. He's to the 25 yard line. He bounced off of the first contact. That was made by Everett Lewis. And he picked up five additional yards after bouncing away to the 25-yard line. Timmy Slagle checking into the offensive set. And Danny Reeder will check out. In essence, Slagle is replacing him as the fullback. And that's where Slagle will set up behind quarterback B.J. Webster, first and 10 at the 25 of Westchester. Webster wants to throw. He's got a man wide open. Hammond at the 10. Hammond dukes one and rolls to the five-yard line as Delaware penetrates again. Now, remember, the Hens were there twice in the first half inside the five-yard line but could not punch it in for a score. We've got a Westchester 
Golden Ram down on the ground. There is a timeout on the field with the score, Westchester 35, Delaware 3. Hey, listen. This is important. See that? That's your heart. That's important. That's the stomach. That's important. But these are the lungs. They are important. Without the lungs, I wouldn't give you a nickel for the whole shooting match. So when you... Remember, take care of your lungs. They're only human. And if you keep on... You ain't gonna be human very long. Da -da -da. Da -da -da. The American Lung Association. I bought this by mail. They said it would grow hair. See any hair? Yeah, it said this gadget would save gas. It did. Now my car won't start. They said I could make money stuffing envelopes. I think I got taken. Most of the time when you shop by mail, you get what you were promised. But if you don't and suspect mail fraud, call your postal inspector or local postmaster. It's our job to fight mail fraud. We'll give those envelope guys a licking. Don't take getting taken. How do you say no when you don't want another drink? I put my hand over my glass. I dump it out. I order soda, water, coffee. It's a signal between us. I say I'd rather dance. I'm driving. I've got an early day. You don't need an excuse. I'll have two Thanks anyway. I just say I've had enough. How do you say no? Any way you want to. Bob Grundy shaken up and replaced in the defensive secondary by Wayne Bundy for Westchester. Here's Delaware first and goal at the six-yard line. Webster throws it high. Is it caught? No. The official right there. Sager went into the air, went with the defensive back. Mike Gillen, actually a linebacker. And he is ruled out of the end zone. And a good call, an excellent call. Although not a popular call here with the adherents at Delaware Stadium. It'll be second down in goal at the six-yard line. Kaysan and Hire are the halfback. Tim Slagle from Elkton, Maryland, is the fullback replacing Danny Reeder right now. Webster. He's going to keep touchdown. B.J. Webster. Well, it took a little more than three quarters. With the clock showing 13 minutes, 19 seconds remaining to be played, but Delaware has achieved its first touchdown of the 1980 season, 83 season, as B.J. Webster goes six yards for the score. And I would imagine Delaware, they are coming out in running formation. The Hens need to get all they can, and as quick as they can, they're going to go for two. Higher sets up as a wing back on the right side. Webster's going to throw it back, a wide open James. He walks in for the score, the two-point PAT. Ron James, who has had his problems here in the opening ball game, running back punt. Not so much the running back part, Howard, but just holding on to the football. But here he catches the two-point PAT, and it's Westchester 35, Delaware 11. Do we have the time? Well, we've got 13 minutes and 19 seconds left, and uh, 24 points is a lot to get, but conversely, in the first half, Westchester put 14 points on the board with only seven seconds of elapsed time, so it's not that it's impossible, but Delaware is going to have to uh, stop making the mistakes that they've been making up to now. You're absolutely right about that quick touchdown tally by Westchester. Here is Gasson getting set to kick off for Delaware. Irving and Holmes deep inside their 20. Westchester looking for an onside kick, but Gasson's going to kick it deep. Irving will backtrack and take it at the goal line. He'll walk in, and now he's coming out. 5, 10, and he is dumped. Getting down very quickly for the Blue Hands. A couple of blue shirts, one of them owned by Todd Gerber, the other by Jake Curcio. And they make the primary stop on Irving. He took the football. His own momentum carried him in uh, to the end zone, Howard. Then he knew that he had to bring it out, and he didn't bring it out very far as Horrocks come on, comes on to run the offense from the seven-yard line. He only got out seven yards on that, and uh, you're right. Had he stayed in the end zone, it would have been two points for Delaware. 
Now let's see if Delaware's defense can put the halt to Westchester. Here is Holmes. He's just burrowing. This is called eat the clock football. Maybe a little early for that, but that's what Westchester wants to do right now. Of course, they're pinned deep in their own territory as well. Holmes just goes ahead for about two out close to the nine-yard line. It'll be second down and eight. But the big ally of Westchester, of course, is not only their point spread of 24, but the clock running in their favor. Under 13 minutes left to play in the football game. Irving. Not much. Irving initially hit by Jeff Howdenshield. Slowed up enough that he got plenty of help. And it's a pickup of two more out to the 11-yard line. It'll be third down and six. And the Delaware defensive pressure will be coming, of course. And I don't know if Harrock wants to put the football in the air right here. I would doubt it. Here is Yorich. He's not going to get the first down as the flag is dropped. As Jurich just goes into a pile out over the 12-yard line and then is pushed back, but there is a flag down of the play. And let's see what the call will be. It's going to be holding against Westchester. And I'm sure that Delaware is going to just say, forget it. Delaware will take the play here because Westchester didn't get the first down and Right now, what Delaware needs is the ball. Absolutely. That is the imperative thing. Delaware's had its problems at times in this ball game, holding on to the football, but now, more than ever, they need the pigskin. Westchester is going to punt it away. Becker comes on to do the honors. James standing at the 45-yard line. There's Becker. He'll kick from about his three. The pressure will be coming. They roughed him the last time. This time they let him get it away, although they did put pressure on him. James is going to fingle for a fair catch. Drops the football, but he did fall on it. James managing to fall on the fumble, his own fumble, at the 46-yard line. Well, the hen staff expected James to add some excitement to the Blue Hen program, and he's added some excitement today, but... Unfortunately, it's been the kind that they weren't looking for. Hires the wing back to the right side. Webster. He's going out of bounds. Pushed out of bounds by a couple of white shirts. Does manage to pick up close to five yards on the play. And just as importantly, of course, he stops the clock. Guy Darienzo is checking in. That's at the spread receiver spot. Guy Darienzo checking in for the Blue Hens. He's a speed merchant. A junior, 5'9", 173-pounder. Second down, and we'll call it six at the 41-and-a-half-yard line of Westchester. Webster's going to throw the football. He's got Darienzo. Darienzo is inside the 20-yard line. Before he is knocked off his feet. Bob Grundy, Sean Niles also in the same area as the receiver Darienzo, who quickly goes out of the lineup. But Delaware has a first down at the Westchester 18-yard line. Hammond back in at spread receiver. Higher in motion. Webster, he's got Case on in front of him. Case on a great block. Webster. He is going to be close, but I don't think he got in. Kaysan, I'll tell you, Howard, Kaysan threw himself one beautiful block. Shelby Raymond has uh, a flair for picking up running backs who are good blockers as well. They've had a history of them here at Delaware, and you see how it pays off. And one of the things the Blue Ends do also is if he's not a good blocker when he gets here, if he wants to play much, he's going to become a good blocker. Here is Webster putting the football its own length from the goal line, Reeder behind Webster. Webster just burrows ahead, touchdown.
B.J. Webster with his second score here in the fourth quarter, the last time from six yards out. This time, setting it up with a run behind a great block by John Kaysen. And then he takes it in on the sneak. Delaware, of course, going for two again. They're going to give it to Kaysen. He walks in. Big hole, Kaysen walks in. There is a timeout on the field with the score, Westchester 35, comebacking Delaware 19. That's Ray Holmes standing inside his own two-yard line, ready to receive the kick from John Gasson. Delaware closing the gap here against Westchester. In the fourth quarter, 35 to 19 the count now as Delaware has tacked on a couple of quick touchdowns. Holmes at the 15, 20, and knocked off his feet. The initial hit on him is made by Tom Gibbons. Tom Gibbons, reserve linebacker. He makes the stop. Gibbons would be playing regularly should anything happen to Captain Greg Robertson. He is Robertson's reserve at middle linebacker. And now let's check it. The ball at the 22-yard line. Talking things over with Mike Horrock. Offside on the kickoff against Delaware. To be honest with you, Howard, I didn't see a flag thrown anywhere. I didn't either. I was wondering what the discussion was, but obviously Delaware was offside on the kickoff, so now they have to do it again from the 35. Westchester obviously thinks they can uh, do a little better than their own 22-yard line as a starting point. So Gaston will tee it up on the 35-yard line. Step off five yards, a little better than five yards. He's a soccer styler. And he's ready to kick off again. Delaware in arrears, but closing the gap. And still there is time. 10.46 as Delaware has scored twice quickly. Here is Irving. 10, 20, 25. Dives forward to close to the 30-yard line before the blue shirts put him down. So they do manage to pick up extra yardage by having Delaware punch the check and kick off again. They put the ball at the 30-yard line. That's a pickup of eight from the first kickoff to the second kickoff. Mike Carrock with Irving and Rich Ulrich. Split behind him. Fumble! Delaware diving for the football. Do the hens have it? Yes! <laughs> Who's got the football, Howard? Delaware diving and making the fumble recovery. Joe McHale. Joe McHale, linebacker. On the left side, dives and makes the fumble recovery at the Westchester 32-yard line. And the crowd, which had been stunned quiet by the explosiveness of Westchester, has now come to life. And so has the Delaware offense. Here's Webster throwing the football, and he throws it short. He was very, very close to stepping in front of the line of scrimmage, and I think, Howard, that he may have sensed that he was up close to the line of scrimmage, and that's throw him off balance a little bit, ergo the short pass. He was aware of it. You could see him looking at the uh, side sideline markers, and uh, it probably distracted his throw. The throw was very, very short. He had a receiver open, but it's an incomplete pass. Brings up a second down and 10 
at the 32-yard line of Westchester. Merklinger in motion. Webster's going to throw the football. Reader cannot bring it in. Very quick throw. And here is a late hit, maybe, on Webster. As coming over and making the belated hit is that fine middle guard for Westchester, Greg Corbo. Personal foul is going to be the call against him. And that will help the Delaware comeback cause. They'll step it off. Well, they're going to talk things over. That's rather moot, though. Pat McKee comes over and tells the official, move the football, would you please, Mr. Branch? They mark it 15, down to the 17-yard line. Personal foul call against the Rams. Helping Delaware, the pass had gone incomplete. Roughing the passer, I guess is the official terminology, Guy Darienzo, who had a key reception in Delaware's last touchdown drive, flips to the far side. Here is the give to Kaysan. He needs a block on the corner, and he's not going to get it. Coming up quickly, that's fine. Defensive half back, the captain for Westchester, Joe Maida, and he bumps Kaysan out of bounds at the 12-yard line. Kaysan managing to pick up a little bit better than four. We'll call it second down and six. The ball at the 12-yard line of Westchester. And the clock really not moving much at all. Ten minutes, 22 seconds remaining to be played. Merklinger is the wingback right. He's coming back in motion. Here is B.J. Webster. He wants to fake the football, and he's grabbed high and thrown to the ground. Good defensive stop made on him by John Menino. He's the left side linebacker. He's a sophomore. He got a hold of Webster's shirt and tosses him down. Webster did penetrate inside the 10-yard line, down to the line, where it'll be third down. They'll need three. Berklinger comes out, higher, checks in. Here's the give. It is to the fullback reader. First down. Got the last couple of yards, the important yard tower going backwards. Reader was hit at the line of scrimmage, and he just turned around and just rolled his way backwards and got the extra couple of yards. Those couple of yards gave Delaware what they needed, a first down at the five-yard line of Westchester. Timmy Slagle is checking into the offensive unit for the Hens. Reader goes out. I don't think he was hurt at all. Maybe just jarred a little bit on the preceding play in which he picked up the first down. Webster. Looking. Passing. Touchdown! Pontiacus. Steve Pontiacus has the reception. And Delaware has closed the gap even further. It is now 35 for Westchester. 25 for Delaware. Lots of time, 9.09. Howard, we wrote Delaware off maybe at the tail end of the third quarter, but have they come back? What do you mean we, Timothy? <laughs> I thought you'd say that. Again, Delaware goes for the two. Here is Webster. He's going to pitch it to Merklinger. Merklinger needs a block. He's got the two. Trying to make the stop on him was Everett Lewis, but he ducked under Lewis, and he's got the two, and it's now a seven-point ball game. Westchester, 35, Delaware, 27. It's an eight-point ball game as we recheck the score. Thank you, Howard. And we'll be back with Delaware's kickoff in a moment. to action at Delaware Stadium as Delaware is charging from way down 
And this time, Gasson boots it high and deep. And as you can see, Holmes said, forget it. We'll take it on the 20. I think on that last Delaware touchdown, uh, Len, the Hens took advantage of Pontiacos' size. He's a uh, 6'4", tight end. And Webster just threw the ball over the defender. That's exactly what he did. He put it up high, and Pontiacus, Pontiacus went and got it. 35-27, 9.09 remaining to be played here in the fourth quarter. It's been a great first game for both teams. I'll explain that in a moment. Here is Irving. He's struck behind the line of scrimmage, and down he goes. Making the stop, Gary Cannon. Let me elaborate on that greatness. Westchester has done a lot of things very well. Their offense has put plenty of points on the board. Their defense has played well throughout the first half and most of the third quarter. But B.J. Webster got things rolling when he came in, although he came in and it was taken out again. But when he re-entered the football game, he got the hand offense rolling. And it has not stopped here in the fourth quarter. The loss is three. Back to the 17. Second down and 13. Parrock. He wants to throw. He delivers it. It is almost intercepted. Or is it intercepted? No. It was juggled. It was juggled as Pulaski went for the interception. Looked like he might have it and then could not hold on. Almost intercepted, and that would have given Delaware a great opportunity to tie this football game up. It goes as an incompletion. Remember what we were talking about before the game started, the heat factor and the, and the fatigue and the fact that Delaware was a little bit deeper? I think that's starting to show right now. Good point. Third down. Clock stopped on the incompletion. Third and 13. Horrocks. They're going to try and draw nothing, absolutely nothing. Coming quickly to make the stop is Mikhail. He just shot through real quick and made the stop on the ball carrier. Joe Mikhail, the linebacker. And Westchester is going to have to punt it away. And still better than half of the fourth quarter remaining here at Delaware Stadium. I think Delaware's coming. They've been coming. Here is Becker. It's almost blocked. Becker goes down. No flag. James is going to get away from the football. He's going to let it bounce to the 48-yard line of Delaware. They'll down it there. Westchester 35. Delaware 27. We'll be back. WNSTV, Wilmington, Newcastle. On in the offense, and he is tackled from behind. Good defensive stop. Fine pursuit by that fine right side linebacker of Westchester, Paul Nanny. He's a junior, 6'2", 210 pounders. And he got Webster as Webster went down the line. And we have a blue hen shaken up on the play. Three is the pickup. But we've got a blue hen down. And it is quarterback B.J. Webster. And John Farr comes back in. Didn't get exactly the greatest reception in the world. Farr with... Some problems as the starting quarterback. Webster doing a fine job coming off the bench. He has pulled Delaware within eight. He is up on his feet. And Dr. Roy Rylander attending Webster. And here is Farr back in now at quarterback. Second down and a little better than seven. From the midfield stretch. Farr's going to try to get it all. He's going to throw it weak. It's going to be intercepted. Intercepted far across the way by Maida. Maida back to the 40-yard line, and he goes down. Or did he go down? Far having the football slip off of his hand. Maida made the interception. 
The Delaware fans are booing Spar, but James fell down uh, before the ball got there. Had James stayed on his feet, I think he would have caught the pass. Here is the interception that thwarts Delaware this time around. Westchester will have the football just inside their own 40-yard line. Flip back, Irving and Ulrich behind Horrock. Here is Horrock keeping the football, and he's got close to five as he dives forward up near the 45-yard line. They'll say he went down at the 44-yard line. Charles Bryce made the stop on him. Bryce has played a fine second half of football. He made a couple of key defensive stops earlier that got Delaware's defense fired up. Second down, long five. At Westchester's 44-yard line. Horrocks blitz is coming. Horrocks is down. Coming on the blitz. Pulaski. Check it. Jimmy Newfrock. Or was it Pulaski? No, we've got a brand new performer in the defensive unit for Delaware. It is Joe Quigg. And I've got to check myself. Joe's the starting linebacker, and he's been there. We just haven't had opportunity to call his name before, but we called it big that time as he got Horrocks back at the 35-yard line. Third and 15. Horrocks, straight back pressure. He dumps it off. Holmes has got the football. Holmes to the 50-yard line. He fumbles the football, and Delaware's going to recover it. Sean Riley has the football for Delaware. Holmes giving it up, fighting for extra yardage, trying to achieve the first down up at the 50-yard line as he had crossed the 45-yard line. Riley recovers the football. Now let's see who comes on to run the offense. Well, I think you can tell by the crowd's reaction. We don't have to tell you a thing. It is B.J. Webster. He has rallied Delaware from way back. They trail it at 35-27. Five and a half minutes remaining to be played. Webster throwing the football. He's got Hammond. Hammond's got a first down and more as he's inside the Westchester 40-yard line at the 38-yard line. Grundy slow to get back on the field for the Rams. He knocked him out of bounds. The receiver, Hammond. First and 10, Gary Enzo is now in replacing Hammond, and he slips out of our picture to the near side. Webster, rush, throws the football, and it is almost intercepted. Almost intercepted. The official right on the spot says no. And giving him a little bit of an argument, but finally giving up the football is Everett Lewis. Lewis juggling the football as he went down. Had the ball go on the ground. Incomplete pass. It'll be second down and 10 at the 38-yard line. Webster this time here are flags thrown as the ball is fumbled. Merklinger dives back on the football. Five yards behind the line of scrimmage. Now let's wait and see. Illegal procedure is the call against the hen. It's been a great comebacking effort, Howard, but I'm sure, as far as everyone is concerned, at least all of those who are rooting for the blue ends, it has not been enough. Not yet. They're still eight points short. 32 points is a long way to come back. A long way. Absolutely. Absolutely. 520 on the clock. Five yard step off. On the illegal procedure call, back to the 43-yard line of Westchester. Webster straight back this time. He steps up. He's throwing it long, throwing it for James. It's batted in the air. Is it intercepted or not? The official says, yes, no, interception. Joe Maida. Joe Maida makes the interception. He's the captain. He's the outstanding 
defensive performer in the secondary. And again, Maida saved the day as Webster comes up a little bit short. And Westchester will bring the football out to the 20-yard line. The Delaware defense will be asked to stop Westchester once again. Great opening game action, Howard. I don't think anybody, anybody uh, would think that Westchester would jump out to a 35-3 to lead as they did. But maybe conversely, nobody thought Delaware could come back the way they have either. Here's Harrock, the quarterback. He wants a couple of first downs right now. He's going to give it to Irving, and Irving is stacked. As the mass is there, Houghton Shield is one of the blue shirts to grab him. Bryce is also there, I believe. It is Charles Bryce. He replaced Eric Leach at left defensive tackle here in the second half and has played a fine football game. Two is the pickup, and it's a scant two. We'll call it second down and eight. But the clock is running now. That is the ally of the Golden Rams. Here is the pitch to Irving. Irving trying to buy some time and they just throw him under back inside the 20 at the 17-yard line. Newfrock put the heat on him and then he had plenty of assistance. Quig, Bryce, Vaughn Dickinson, they were all there. Ken Pulaski was also there putting on the pressure. The loss is back to the 17. It'll bring up a third down and 13 situation. And the Delaware defense has done its job here in the late going. The offense still has a little bit more to achieve. Harrock needs a big third down play. He's going to give it to Holmes. Holmes is hit straight at the line of scrimmage by the captain of the Delaware Blue Hens, Greg Robertson. Robertson getting there just about the same time the football did. Holmes goes down at the 15-yard line, and it'll bring up a fourth down punting situation. Do you think the hands will be coming, Howard? I imagine they will. 15-yard uh, line, 344 left. Uh, they want the ball in as good a position as they can get it. And it'll be up to Ronnie James if Becker can get it out there to make a decision on whether handling the football, letting it roll, their catch he's had an up and down afternoon Becker standing back at the one yard line he knows that the pressure is going to be coming Almost blocked as they get there, but just a little bit too late. James at his 40. Cannot get away. Fumbles the football. Westchester's going to recover the football at the Delaware 30-yard line. Westchester with another turnover. Making the recovery is Jim O'Donnell. Reserve junior linebacker in with the punting team. And Ronnie James gives up the football. Tough break for James. And Westchester will have it at the Delaware 30-yard line. Ulrich. Holmes. Check it. Irving behind Horrocks. It is going to be Ulrich. No, Horrocks is going to keep it and be buried. Sean Riley just falls on Horrock back at the 31-yard line. Three minutes, 19 seconds. And the clock running. Delaware trailed 35-3. to B.J. Webster got him rolling, but they haven't quite rolled all the way. Horrock throws the football. Is it caught? Flag is down. The official says no reception. There is a flag drop at the 28-yard line. Hines, the tight end, trying to make the reception. And he's happy about the circumstances. He walked by the official and clapped his hands. 
evidently trying to indicate that the flag is going to go against Delaware. And it is. So forget the incomplete pass. Westchester, I'm sure, will be taking the penalty. Glenn Holmquist, Howard Kessner at Delaware Stadium, and it's been a great opener. Next week, I'll be in Colonial Williamsburg as Delaware goes on the road to face William and Mary. The step off is to the 21-yard line. 10-yard holding penalty against Delaware. And it is first down for the Golden Rams. Parrocks is the quarterback. He's been there all day. He's going to pitch it to Irving. Irving picking his way nicely along the near sideline. He's got himself five yards before he's forced out of bounds by Kenny Pulaski. The free safety with help. Pick up close to better than five yards as they mark the football inside the 15 down to the 14-yard line. That's a seven-yard pickup. It'll be second down and three. So Delaware's comeback effort may be coming up short. Westchester looking on now to add an insurance touchdown if they can. Here is Irving, and he's going to go nowhere. Fumble. Let's see who's got the football. Delaware. Delaware has the football. Was it Robertson? I believe it was Greg Robertson who came up with the fumble. Well, I'll tell you, Howard, in this heat, in this humidity, we've had a lot of fumbles. We've had our interceptions, and you could probably expect it. Put that all together, the heat and the humidity, with the first game jitters, and you could expect it. Delaware has turned the ball over five times, three times on fumbles, twice on interceptions. Uh, Westchester's only turned it over twice, and both were fumbles. This is the second one right here. Webster will run the show from deep in his own territory. 2.35 is left on the clock. Webster's throwing the football. He throws it behind Hammond, and it's almost picked off. Hammond had the ball go off his hands, and almost picking the ball off was Mark Muston, the trailing defensive end. Muston not able to come up with the reception, though, or the interception. And it's second down and 10. Clock stops on the incomplete with two minutes, 30 seconds exactly remaining to be played in the football game. Hammond out of our picture to the far side. Webster needs time, throws the football. He's got his receiver, Hammond. Hammond to the 30, to the 35, and he dives forward to the 38-yard line. Hammond quickly off his feet. By that defensive end, Mark Muston, but he bounces up quickly. He knows the clock is running, and he needs to get back into the huddle. And Delaware is exercising a timeout. There is a timeout on the, on the field. Scoreboard shows two minutes, 21 seconds remaining to be played. It is Westchester still in the lead, 35 to Delaware's 27. And score their first victory over Delaware since long time ago. Delaware outscoring Westchester by 555 points to about 118 or so over the last 15 years, and they've just manhandled Westchester for the most part. But Westchester hoping to get most of it back here this afternoon. As far as these young men playing for the Golden Rams are concerned, they'll get it all back. All 15 years right here if they can hold on. Here is Webster. Flipping down is Hammond. Trying to make his cut at the 42-yard line of Westchester. Hammond slipping down. And the pass goes incomplete. Clock stopping on the incompletion. 
Howard, nice to have you aboard here for Delaware Football 1983. I'll tell you, it's been a great opener. Great opener. Uh, more than anybody could have expected, to be honest with you. Of course, uh, the highly partisan crowd would have been happier if the score were reversed, but uh, game's not over yet. There's still 2.16 left. And Delaware trails by eight. Second down and ten from their own 37. Webster needs the blocking, throws the football. He's got Terry Enzo. Terry Enzo's down. Unfortunately, could not keep his feet. Falls down at the 45-yard line of Westchester. The officials moving the chains quickly. And they start the clock. 2.07, it says, and it's running. Gary Enzo splits to the far side this time. Merklinger is the wing back on the right side. Webster trying to get one more. He throws it to Merklinger. Merklinger out of bounds. Smart play by Merklinger. First, he thought about trying to get downfield when he saw the white shirts coming in on him. He quickly stepped out of bounds, stopping the clock. His first thought was out of bounds. Then he saw he had a couple of steps. He took them and then went out of bounds. He got an extra couple of yards. 41-yard line is where the football will rest with the clock stopped on the out-of-bounds completion. 152, 35-27, Westchester leading Delaware. But the Hens trying to come all the way back from a 35-3 deficit. Double wing formation. Plago is the fullback. Webster's throwing the football, and it's going to be intercepted. Maida makes his third interception. It bounced off one blue hand, and then Maida made the interception. Joe Maida, just a uncanny guy at being at the right spot at the right time. They herald him as the All-American caliber for Division II football, and what I've seen this afternoon, this weekend against Delaware, he deserves it, Howard. He's doing a heck of a job, like you say. It's uh, the third interception, but I'll tell you, if I if I have to pick a star of the game right now, I got to give it to Paul Nanny from Westchester. He's done, he's done a heck of a job up front. Nanny, Jacob, Corbo, Lechner, Muston, they've all done the job when they had to. Delaware has only one timeout left. We have one minute, 43 seconds remaining to be played. Westchester tried to achieve the big upset. They came in here about a three to four touchdown underdog, and now the Rams evidently have taken too much time or are going to be hit with an illegal procedure call. Well, there are the Blue Hens hoping to open up the 1983 campaign on a winning note, but it was not to be. 35-27, maybe I still speak too prematurely, but the Rams, with Delaware only able to stop the clock once more with a timeout. They only have one timeout left. They can chew up the time. Here is Holmes. He's breaking tackles at the line of scrimmage, and he bursts out over the 40 to the 42-yard line. Not quite enough for a first down. He'll be about five yards short. Second down and five will be the call. But the clock runs, and Delaware needs the turnover right now. They've benefited some from Westchester turnovers. B.J. Webster came in and got the offense in motion. The defense had its problems early, but they have played better here in the fourth quarter. And here is the give. Just straight ahead goes Irving. Workhorse halfback for Otto Nottinger at Westchester. He goes ahead for a couple. That's no, not the important thing. The important thing is running the clock. Charles Bryce made the stop for all of you keeping those kind of statistics. Under 50 seconds. Clock running. Third down. Delaware needing to stop Westchester here. It's third and a little better than three from the 42-yard line. Here is the give. Holmes is not going to have the first down, and now Delaware is going to have to quickly stop the clock or it's going to run out of them. The Hens do stop the clock with 29 seconds left to play. Here is Holmes limping just a little bit as he goes back into the huddle. Now he's going to come off to the sideline. Westchester will punt the football away, and you know that Delaware's coming this time, Alex. No doubt about it. Yes, they are coming, and, uh, oh, they have to. They, they've got to block it because if Westchester gets any kind of a decent kickoff, uh, Delaware's going to be uh, well inside their own territory 
Uh, of course, any any kind of a run back, notwithstanding, but they're they're going to be around their 30 yard line between the 20 and the 30. Well, the key now is to put the pressure on, and if it is kicked away by Becker, Ronnie James has got to hold on to the football. Here they come. Not getting there is Quig. James is going to take it at the 22, and he is going to be hemmed in and down at the 23-yard line. The white shirts were there. One of those down very quickly was Mike Gillen, and he helped to put the pressure on James. Delaware will have 19 seconds in which to go 77 yards on their own 23-and-a-half-yard line. Webster will come on and try to get something going long. Of course, he wants to go to the sideline as well. If he can't hit anything long, you can be look, looking for Westchester to play way, way deep, and they are playing way, way deep. Sean Niles is 25 yards deep in the secondary. Webster going for Hammond. It is almost intercepted. Almost intercepted again by Maida. Joe Maida, who has just played one super football game for Westchester, he almost made the interception again as the white shirts were back there as Hammond went long. That ball, that ball was about 10 yards over Hammond's head, and there was three white shirts there, two others in addition to Maida. We are 13 seconds away from a major upset. Westchester in the lead by eight. They streaked out to a 35-3 lead before Delaware could come back. And it's just 13 seconds from being a complete major setback for the Blue Hens. Here is the pass intended for Merklinger. It's tipped away by the man charging up in front of Merklinger, Everett Lewis. And the clock now shows eight seconds. The only, uh, well, you always look for silver linings in a situation like this. And I'm sure if you're Chubby Raymond, the thing you're looking for right now is the fact that he may have lost the ball game. It may have been a major upset, but Howard, he may have found his right starting quarterback. He also put 24 points on the scoreboard in one quarter. Uh, yeah, you're right. Uh, B.J. Webster may very well get the call to start the game next week. And next week, William and Mary is the opposition on the road. Here is Webster. He's throwing the football, and he throws it short, trying to hit Hammond up at the 45-yard line. And the clock shows just three seconds. There is B.J. Webster. He has done yeoman work here in the second half. Gave way to John Spar as the starting quarterback, but when Spar could not get the offense moving, Webster came in to replace him. He's a junior like Spar. Webster is shorter. Spar 6'3", Webster 6 foot. And he's a little lighter in weight, 189 pounds. Fourth down, of course, Delaware will have to go for it. And before they can even run the play, we are going to have an offside call against the Blue Hens as the line judge comes in to make the penalty call against the Blue Hens, marking the football back to inside the 20-yard line. Otto Neidinger and the Westchester Rams major upset here at Delaware Stadium on the opening Saturday of the 1983 football campaign. And the Blue Hens, runners-up in Division 1AA playoff competition last year, are going to have to regroup. Here's one final shot by Webster. He's going to throw it to Ron James. James gets away from a couple of men. He is still fighting for yardage, but finally down. The clock has run out on the Delaware Blue Hens comeback effort. The final score here at Delaware Stadium in Newark, the Westchester Golden Rams have defeated in a shocker the University of Delaware Blue Hens, snapping a 15-game consecutive losing streak to Delaware. The final count, 35 for Westchester, 27 for Delaware. We'll be back.
There were lots of people milling on the football field. We thought the football game was over, Howard, but in among all those people was a little yellow hanky. We had a face mask call on that last pass completion that gave Delaware a first down. The call went against Westchester. Delaware does have one final effort here from the Westchester 46-yard line. So hold on. Let's see if Webster can take them long. Webster going for it all, throwing for Kaysan, and it's broken up. Broken up by you-know-who, Joe Maida. One more time does it for the Golden Rams of Westchester. Just a whale of a football game for Maida and a whale of a football game that we broadcast to you as Delaware does go down to defeat once again. We'll wrap it up for good this time. 35 to 27 is our final count. Howard Westchester. This is University of Delaware Football, sponsored by Bank of Delaware, Delaware's bank. Delmarva Super E Plus, the most valuable addition to your new home.